Welcome back, game makers. In this video, we are going to wrap up our little introduction to pathfinding and motion solving just by looking at probably the best way in game maker a beginner can do motion finding. And it's going to be getting these little ghosts to basically break our room down into a grid, add objects to the grid that are obstacles, and then tell the objects, hey, navigate your way through the grid to find the player. Now, if you watch some of my previous pathfinding uh, examples, you've noticed that the ghost up here got stuck using potential step or potential path. Okay, This method, you can see, actually works well. The ghosts find a nice path to the player. It's a little bit smoother overall, and I think it's probably your best option as a beginner if you don't want to write your full you know, routine yourself how to find these paths. So let's go look how to use the grid and potential paths. So the first thing I'm just going to do is just explain the basics of what the system does. What you do when you use this way of using the grid is you actually create a grid with a line of code and it's going to make a grid. Now you get to say how big the squares are in the grid. If your room in your game happens to be wall pieces or obstacles of size 32 by 32, then I would make your grid 32 by 32. But you could make them bigger or you could make them smaller depending on what you can get away with with your obstacle avoidance. But keep in mind, if your pieces are 32 by 32 for the obstacles, try to start with that being your grid size. So once your grid size is set, it's going to make this grid in memory and every single square is going to be empty, okay, obstacle free. Then what you get to do is you get to add instances or you get to personally mark squares that are going to be obstacles, okay? No travel. So you'll see here that if this object is added into the grid, the script will mark that square as being an obstacle, that one, that one, that one, that one, all yellow. If you're doing it in not precise mode, the same object would mark all nine of those squares as no, nope, cannot go there. Now, if you have a lot of obstacles, you'll notice that the grid starts to get marked with a lot of squares as no-go spots, right? You can't travel there. Then what you're going to say is, solve me a path that takes you from one spot around the obstacles to another spot. And that's it. And this has already been written in GameMaker for you for the most part, and it works pretty well. So let's go look at how this code actually works. So I'll go to my object here. Here's the first thing I've done. I've made this object called Global. I only have to do this once, okay, in my game, okay, for basic use. But it's just this code here, okay? So don't worry about this code. It's just this right here. I'm making a grid to be used for motion planning. So motion planning grid create. This is a game maker script. I've said start making my grid at the very left, so 0x position, 0y position in the room. I mean, unless your room's really big and you're doing weird stuff, Usually you're just going to go 0, 0. 25, how many cells wide? So when it goes to make this grid, you know, how big do you want the grid to go? Well, I've calculated for my room in particular, I calculated out that at 32 pixels a square, that I'm 25 squares wide and a certain number of squares down. So I did that super complicated math all on my own. And I basically got to 25 wide and 19 squares tall. So you have to do that work. 32 by 32, how wide should each square be and how tall should each square be? So once you've got these settings, that's probably the hardest part of the whole system here. I've got this grid made. It's made in memory. Every square in it is considered free and open. And I've got the ID of it that got kicked back. Global dot motion planning grid. So I've called it global MPG. The next thing I do is for this particular little game is I wanted to add wall pieces as the only thing that can be considered obstacles. So I go MP grid add instances. I give it the grid right that I want to work with and that's my grid there global MPG. I give it the instance type wall and I say false. The false is whether it's precise or not precise. And I think you saw there, here, the difference. If you have precise on, only where the sprite overlaps the cell, those cells will count. 
if you have not precise on, it's, I think, the bounding box of the object that's set in the sprite. So you may even end up marking more of the objects, right? Or more of the squares, cells, as no-go obstacle places. Now, once that's done, you have to remember in memory, there's this one grid. It's been created. I'm not going to touch it now, right? For this room, that's its grid. Now what do I do? Well, I go to the ghost. And I'm going to tell the ghost to find a path through this grid. Step method. Not the best place to do this, but I'm going to do it here just, just for a quick example. But I say MP grid path. Oops, let me backtrack one step here. In the ghost create, I'm actually going to be getting the ghost to follow a path. And to follow the path, the ghost needs its very own path variable. Now, we talked about this in one or two of the previous videos. I've given an instance variable for every ghost called my path, and it's set to reference a path that's just been made. Now, when you use path add and that creates a path, it creates a totally empty path with no points on it. Okay, it's called my path. I'm going to need that because now I use it here in the step method. I say, MP grid path script run. This is pre made in Game Maker. I give it the grid, okay, that I just made, global MPG. Some of the cells in that grid are marked as obstacles, some are still left totally free. I give it the path that I want to fill up, which is my path. This ghost will have its very own path that gets set. Starting from where, right? X start and Y start. Well, wherever the ghost currently is, X, wherever the ghost is, Y. The goal, TX, the player's X, and TY, the player's Y. And false. Okay, allow dialog, I don't, or allow diagonal. I don't want diagonal uh, path motions. I don't think it's a big deal. You could say true, false, depending on your game. Try either. But I'm going to say no diagonal movements, right, through the grid. Once this is finished, this has filled the path as far as it could go, possibly to the goal, with the path. Or sorry, with the pathway to the target. Now, if it never found a complete path, this path still is partially filled. So I'm not going to do any checking here, and I'm just going to say path start. And now I'm basically assigning a path like you would assign any normal path. Go my path, a speed of four, and stop when you're there and absolutely follow the true points you know set where this path starts and that's pretty well it the ghosts follow the paths and this all works fairly nicely now while this is running and you sort of watch it go remember very quickly when the game started that grid was made and filled with the wall pieces and then every single step the ghost is asking this path for itself to be calculated based on that grid okay and it works okay this works better than the other systems in game maker now the downside here is this is computationally expensive right it's doing all this path solving stuff in this script here you actually don't want to call this every step put this in an alarm or use a counter and only run this once in a while so a neat thing you could do in an alarm is you could do something like this you could cut this out of here, and you could say when it's created, we could do something like alarm zero maybe is one, right? So it's going to go off really soon. I could code alarm zero, and in alarm zero, I can say follow the path, right? So there's my alarm code, and this happens right away at the beginning of the game. But then maybe I want this to update every 60 steps. Whoops. So hey, alarm zero. Do this again in 60 steps. And so this just creates a cycle, right? You can decide, you know, when you want to stop this, start it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You probably know some other code already. But at least now this is only happening every 60 steps. Or you might even just want to make it a random number between 30 and 90, right? So it doesn't need to check all the time you know 30 times a second or 60 times a second you just make this happen once every 60 steps or 90 steps and this is nice right and this will still work and the ghost will still run and find their paths 
Uh, that's the very dead basics on using the grid. Um, once we see this work here, I'll just point out one little extra thing that you might find useful, which a lot of the students I want to know is here I've just added walls as the obstacles. Can you make the uh, line one not set before reading it? Oh, shame on me. Anyways, I'm not going to correct this here, but what I did was I went and used this stuff here in alarm. But I don't have these variables in the alarm. Okay, so I said I wouldn't fix it, but I will fix it. There we go. And now it should run. But the comment I was going to make was some students say, well, you just added walls. What happens if I want the ghosts also to be obstacles? Well, you would do that. Give me a sec here. So there it is working again nicely. If you wanted the ghosts themselves to be obstacles to themselves, one thing you have to do, it gets a little trickier, and I'll leave it for you to sort of fiddle and try to discover, is you actually can't just use this grid like this. You actually have to add the walls, and you have to add the ghosts, but don't add the ghosts now because the ghosts are always moving. So this would be something you would have to constantly update. You'd have to constantly be updating the grid, basically wiping it clean with a fresh grid, and then adding walls and adding ghosts. Or there's fancier ways like maybe you save a grid with the walls in it and then just add the ghosts every step, right, to make it a bit more efficient. But I think this gets most beginners going. Most just want to avoid walls. If you also wanted to avoid something else, remember you can add a second line here, right? You can copy this if you want them to avoid burgers. You know, you can, you know, put burger in there. And wherever the burgers are currently are, those squares are going to be marked as obstacles, right? So you can add whatever you want, right? You're just not limited to one line here. Anyways, that's your basics on the grids. Hopefully that helps you get going. I like it. It's a nice way that works most of the time to solve for your paths. Thanks for watching.